If you plan to add a new process or a new tool to the CI pipeline, you might get to the point where you set up your own Jenkins and start experimenting. To make things as easy as possible, you should understand Jenkins' distributed concept and how it affects you. I'm Tabu Krick from Oldenburg, Germany, and today I will explain the role of the Jenkins controller and Jenkins agents. When you install Jenkins, you're actually installing the Jenkins controller. It allows for centralized configuration, provides the web interface, and distributes the load of all jobs. The actual work for instance, um, a build job that compiles your code and runs your tests is passed along to an executor node on a Jenkins agent. This is also why it doesn't matter if your Jenkins controller is running on Windows or on Linux. If a job requires a Windows environment, it's sufficient if the Jenkins agent provides that. In theory, the Jenkins controller can also be used as an executor node. This can be useful when you set things up on your own laptop for some experiments, but it's not recommended in a production setting because it would slow down the controller in its main purpose. When a job is scheduled manually by a timer or triggered by a commit, the Jenkins controller lets it wait in a queue until one of the agents is available. Then it sends the required information to that agent for processing. While the agent is working, a communication channel to the controller is kept alive to constantly report updates until the agent eventually sends back the results. That's it for now. Thank you guys for watching and if you find this useful, please give the video a like and follow us on YouTube or LinkedIn for more videos.